currently Kirkland. Your source for city news and events in the community. With Erica Sanford at the news desk, stay up to date with weekly news reports on what's happening in Kirkland. Now, here's Erica. Welcome to Currently Kirkland, where every week you can engage with your community by discovering the latest developments in citywide events. I'm Erica Sanford. Is council ready to vote? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. The City Council unanimously voted last week to connect three of Kirkland's business districts, eight of its neighborhoods, and thousands of its residents with what they hope will soon be a five and a half mile bicycle, pedestrian, and transit corridor. These uses will replace the existing railway that runs from Kirkland's southern boundary near the South Kirkland Park and Ride up to Totem Lake. From there, it could connect to the northern edge of the trail Redmond is building on the four-mile rail spur it purchased for $10 million a few years ago. Eventually, the Cross Kirkland Trail will connect to Seattle and the Burt Gilman Trail when the Washington Department of Transportation finishes the replacement bridge for 520. Well, this trail will um, help Kirkland in three major areas. First off, it is a major uh, economic development project. We know that major employers in uh, Kirkland are very excited about having this trail. This is an important recreational trail. This is something our citizens can use on a daily basis. And finally, it is a transportation corridor for bike commuters, pedestrian commuters, and someday in the far future we'll see some sort of a people mover. So this trail is uh, available and there to meet a lot of Kirkland's needs. For all of this, Kirkland will pay $5 million, and if the trail's physical and legal condition pass the scrutiny of city inspectors during the 60-day due diligence period, Kirkland could own the corridor by March of next year. Council members hope to have the corridor ready for public use as early as possible, and they hope to begin construction as early as next year. City planners believe the path will enhance Kirkland's strong quality of life brand and help convince major employers such as Google to move, stay, and expand here. In the future, if it were, imagine if it were some kind of transportation corridor, even if it's bikes and pedestrians only, um, you know, Googlers could live in Bellevue, pop on the trail, and mm -hmm. come all this way. Mm -hmm. It's not just Google, it's Totem Lake at the other end. Yeah. You know, you live down here, you jump on yeah. your bike and head down to Totem Lake. The city staff has pursued the corridor since the fall of 2010, and several independent panels have endorsed the endeavor, including the Parks Commission, the Transportation Commission, and the prestigious Urban Land Institute. We think the trail really makes a ton of sense, not only for Totem Lake, but for Kirkland itself. It creates lots of opportunities. It should create lots of nodes and lots of places things can happen, both short-term and long-term and we realize there's challenges working with Sound Transit and the county and all these agencies, but it seems like there would be a good payoff there. As early as 1986, the Houghton and Lakeview neighborhoods planned a bike and pedestrian path along the corridor. In the 90s, city leaders pursued a trail that would have paralleled the existing rail line. Not until the end of the next decade, however, did any of these ideas start resembling reality. In 2009, two events accelerated Kirkland's plans for the corridor. First, in March of that year, the City Council approved the City's active transportation plan. The plan's highest priority was the multimodal corridor. In December of 2009, the port purchased the entire corridor from Burlington Northern Santa Fe. The purpose of the port's purchase was to put the 34-mile rail line in the public domain and then eventually sell it to public agencies that were willing to develop it for transportation purposes. Initially, that public agency was King County, which was interested in purchasing everything available inside of the county. For months in 2011, the corridor was tied up in negotiations between King County and the Port of Seattle. 
In October, however, after months of little progress between the county and the port, Kirkland's leaders resumed negotiating for the 5.5 mile long Kirkland segment. The acquisition of the rail corridor is going to be a game changer for Kirkland's quality of life and for the city's economic development. The process of acquiring the corridor was sort of a triumph of the hurry up and wait strategy. Uh, on February 1st of this year, the city council adopted a resolution that established a citywide work program. And one element of that was to explore acquiring the corridor. And we used the momentum of that resolution in March to offer the port $5 million for the Kirkland segment. And then many months went by while we waited for the port to consider our offer and its negotiations with King County. Um, and through all, all that, we just stayed patient and we stayed flexible and we just waited for a breakthrough to happen. The breakthrough came a month later with the corridor's official appraisal. The appraisal valued the 100-foot wide corridor at $5.5 million to $6.5 million, a value that was compatible with Kirkland's $5 million offer. You know, the people who have been on the council longer than I say that this has been in the works or in the thought process of the community for about 20 years. So I think the opportunity came around quickly and maybe that's because we, I, I, ho I like to think that we made the opportunity, that we sort of set our intention and then circumstances conspired that, you know, the port and, the King, and King County weren't able to negotiate a deal or things weren't going well with that. And we were able to just come in and solve problems and it's good for all the parties and especially for us, I think. We'll turn now from visions of bike trails and lake views to those of tree lightings, house lightings, and boat lightings. These are the images of the holidays in Kirkland. And though you can earn them the old-fashioned way, we thought we'd offer you a sample of them here.
Scores of residents will be participating in the annual Polar Bear Plunge, 1 p.m. January 1st at Marina Park. And currently Kirkland will be there as well. So make sure to smile or grimace, whichever you can muster. Remember, you can access any episode of Currently Kirkland on demand on the city's website, on your mobile devices, and on YouTube. We'd also love to hear from you. If you have any news tips, suggestions, or comments, please send them to kirklandtv at kirklandwa.gov. Thanks for watching Currently Kirkland.